one of the things I didn't do off the tour of Rwanda was a power review. So I thought I'd get into some of that power data now. I only sat down to look at the power files from the tour of Rwanda a couple days ago. And first thing I noticed was none of them are actually that impressive. None of the stages were super long. There wasn't a stage where I had to produce a massive amount of power. It was really just sort of a a controlled, solid effort across eight days, which kind of makes sense. I mean, it's a long tour, and if you do commit so deeply on any one day, you really do pay for it. So it does it does make sense that it was a really a really steady race. Another big factor in that was the altitude. The lowest stage of the whole race took place in Kigali, which was at 1600 meters. Every stage from there had a pretty much a minimum altitude of 1600 meters and ranged up to 2500 meters as the highest point of the race. So producing big numbers at those sorts of altitudes is really difficult. It's like you can't you can't push your sea level numbers at that altitude. No matter how much time you spend up there, no matter how much how well you adapt, you just can't. There's physically not enough oxygen to produce those numbers. So you kind of have to keep that in mind when looking across the power data that you are potentially producing 10, maybe even 20 watts less than you are capable of. That number is also really difficult to quantify depending on how well you have adapted to the altitude and, and the varying heights that we, we hit. You don't really know, hey, everything's 20 watts down or everything's 30 watts down or it's only five or 10 watts down. So it is really difficult to, to analyze the power data properly. The other thing is that I've never raced at altitude like that, so I don't have another race to compare it to directly. As a whole, the tour was just over 800 kilometers, and going into the race, we thought we'd be climbing about 20,000 meters, but it looked like that was actually a bit wrong, and we ended up climbing about 17,000 meters across the, the eight days. So still a fair amount of climbing, considering the first day was a three kilometer prologue. My total time for the tour was 22 hours, which gave us an average speed of 36 kilometers an hour across the tour. Pretty solid, nothing crazy about that. A lot of the stages were raced at a really steady pace and with that amount of climbing, I think that's an average speed that, that was to be expected. My total TSS from the race was 1,130. And that's using an FTP of 370 watts, which is my FTP down at sea level. So it's hard to quantify again. I mean, up at altitude, my FTP was probably more like 355, maybe even 360 watts. So the TSS would have been higher, but again, I'm guessing at that. So just kind of stuck it at 370, which is what I know. And that brings a TSS of just over 1,100, which is, not as big maybe as I was expecting, but because the stages were not incredibly long, it wasn't seven days of 160 or 180 kilometers a day, they were really focused around the sort of 120 kilometer range. The average speed wasn't that high, which meant there were a good three and a half to four hours most days, but enough TSS to really feel it by the end, but nothing super extreme. Because the stages were a little shorter, it did allow us to race pretty solidly every day. There was no day where we just sort of tapped off completely and kind of took an easy day, mainly because there were no flat days to, to kind of chill and recover and recuperate by sitting in the peloton. The most interesting power data and my hardest day of the whole race came on stage five, which was the day I slipped into the breakaway. The stage was three and a half hours long and raced at an average speed of 37 and a half, which gave us a total of 125 kilometers. That stage also had two and a half thousand meters of ascent and was one of probably the three or four tough days that we encountered. The stage started at an altitude of 1800 meters and that was one of the days that we went over 2500 meters. So it was all raced in that range, which, which is pretty high. I slipped into the breakaway after about six or seven kilometers as we hit the first climb of the day and I actually had to bridge across alone, probably across a 20 second gap. To jump across to the break I had to do a one minute effort of about 505 watts which is fairly considerable at 1900 meters but when I got there I still felt pretty good and continued to, to roll through with the guys for the first climb so that we could establish a bit of a gap. That gave me a 10 minute power of 365 watts on the first climb of the day. That's nothing close to what I can produce for 10 minutes, but five days into a race and at altitude, 
it was a pretty solid effort. We rolled together quite well as a group of about nine riders until we hit the 50k mark, which was a category one climb, which was 18 k's at about four and a half percent. The pace at the start of that hill was not particularly fast, but as our gap started to drop, I put in an effort of maybe about a minute or two at 400 watts, and that whittled the group down to three riders. The power across that whole climb, which took us about 45 minutes, was 300 watts. Nothing that I can't do in a training ride, but again, 50 k's into a stage and upwards of 1600 meters all the way up to 2500 meters. It was a, a pretty solid tempo. My legs were feeling good at that point and I was kind of riding at a sustainable pace, but not pushing my limits too much because I knew I would need to save myself for the next climb as well. We hit the final category one climb of the day, which if I remember was about 12 or 13 kilometers long or something. That took us about 30 minutes to get up and I produced 280 watts up there. Again, not a power that is, that is massive for me, but when you start taking everything into consideration, it was starting to hurt by the top. That gave me a normalized power of just over 280 watts for the stage and that was for three and a half hours. That was pretty much the hardest stage of the race from a power perspective for me. That was probably that was probably the stage of the race that I also felt by far the best. It's probably a couple of factors, you know, being out front and, and really motivated and, and pushing hard and, and working together with some guys just helps you really stay engaged and also forget what's going on in your legs. A normalized power of 280 watts at sea level would be a fairly typical race for me. Nothing insanely hard, not an easy day, but, but pretty manageable. Take that up to upwards of 1600 meters, racing all the way up to 2500 meters, and it does make it a little bit harder. It is potentially the equivalent of 290, maybe 295 down at sea level, but again, that's hard to quantify. I think to show how much I put into that day, you have to look at the day after, which was stage six. Unfortunately, I don't have much power data from stage six. It was pouring with rain pretty much the whole stage and I've got a lot of power drops. So it's kind of hard to, to quantify, quantify the day's efforts. But the most telling factor for me was I had a maximum heart rate on the stage of 153 beats a minute, which is nothing. My max heart rate is probably closer to 195, 197 and on stage six it was probably one of the hardest stages of the race and i was pushing to my absolute limit but my body just wasn't wasn't capable i just didn't have anything left in the legs i didn't have any power and i physically just couldn't push my body that hard so to see a max heart rate of 153 really kind of shows that the day before in the break bridging across to the breakaway early in the stage i hit 188 beats a minute and that just kind of puts it in perspective. I suffered a lot on stage six. I started to lose time and I couldn't hang with the leaders that day. And it kind of all makes sense. I put a lot into, into stage five and it really shows how my body was feeling on stage six. That is tour racing though. You have to treat the race with respect and every stage with respect because what you put out one day, you will pay for the next day. And that clearly showed but it was a risk I was willing to take and it's still a risk that I'm I'm glad I took so in terms of power data nothing overly special not my hardest race of the year no personal best but definitely the first time I've raced solidly for eight days I had a bit of insight as to how it would feel when we did the Grand Prix Saguenay and the Tour of Beauce earlier in the year that was nine days of racing in 11 days so I kind of knew what it would feel like to be really exhausted and still have to keep racing but in terms of stringing eight days together, it was the first time. And I think I came out of it pretty well. I was definitely really tired by the end and I'm not sure how many more stages I really had in me, but, but it was a good experience to string eight days of solid racing together and walk away from it still feeling kind of okay. 280 watts for three and a half hours sounds like a lot more after two weeks off the bike. <laughs>